in Russia. These are not comic books. These books come out of your leading universities and colleges. A lot of the people that go to college don't even know about these books. Wow. On page 36 in this book, it says Christ Emmanuel between the archangels Michael and Gabriel. Show that for the camera. This is Christ in the middle. Right. Now, my question is, why in the world did you go and go all the way to Russia? Hey, what's the name of this book again? Uh, Art Treasures of Russia. Art Treasures of Russia. And they got Christ painted as a black man. But when you get to America, give me that book. They give you this. Something's going wrong. Right. What's the name of this book? Negroes don't know nothing about books like this. They don't know anything about records like this. This right here is like comic books to them. They have no idea about how expensive and rare these books are. Again, Christ between the archangels Michael and Gabriel. Are they black? Look at the painting. Look at the color of his face in contrast to the wall behind him. So you're telling me that was a mistake? No, they knew what color he was. That's what he just, just, what he just got through reading. Lands. The lost tribes are talking about these so-called blacks and Hispanics. Now we're gonna get into the Hispanic tribe. Now read about Christopher Columbus. Did Christopher Columbus accidentally find America? No, no, no. So read this. All his life. What chapter are we read it? Enter Columbus. That's chap the chapter of this book. Enter Columbus. Now read this book. All his life. Columbus's ideas about geography. So, sister, listen to that. All Columbus's life, his ideas about geography, where lands were located. Come on. Columbus's ideas about geography uh -huh. were permeated. Were permitted. Were permeated with a peculiar religious myth mysticism. Mysticism. There's a religious mystery that he had an interest in this. Come on. He kept the book of prophecy. So Christopher Columbus kept the book of what? Kept the book of prophecy. Which equals what? The Bible. The Bible. This is the book of prophecies he kept. Come on. In which he collected quotations. Uh-huh. Mostly from the Bible. So where did Columbus get his quotations from? The Bible. That's where he got his quotations from. This is not even the Bible. This is a book. And do they teach you this in school? No. They say, oh, he accidentally found America. He was looking for India for spices and gold. Come on. Often those dealing with aisles for all. What does aisles mean? Islands. Columbus looked through scriptures in the Bible that dealt with islands. Read that part again. Often those dealing with aisles for all. Now let's find out what book Christopher Columbus was interested in. Jump down to this part. A striking element. Now remember, sister, this is just a book. We're not even reading the Bible. We're reading a book. So you can understand this book 
is a compilation of records that they found, and it's going to tell you the dates that they collected these records on. Read it. Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. Go to the part here. Tell them what it says there. Passages from Spanish explorers in the southern United States. So what's in this book? Passages from Spanish explorers. What do you mean by Spanish explorers? Conquerors, conquistadors, the people that came to rob the people. Then what were they exploring? They were exploring how to destroy the natives. Read it again. Passages from Spanish explorers in the southern United States from 1528 to 1543. You hear the dates? 1500s. That's how old these records are. This was before the Bible was translated. So what in the world is it mentioned in Ezra's here? Showing you that the Bible was always here. You got that? So these are, this is the information that the Spanish explorers found when they came among the natives. This is one of the heavy books. Because it tell you about how they, how, what their customs were and all of that. Tell you that they were keeping the Sabbath day. The fringes that they wear in their garments, they got it out of the Bible. They had their hair prints on their clothing. They knew they were the Israelites. That's what this is talking about. Come on. A lost tribe discovered in New York. Page 365. Now, we're going to read the part where it says waving a bear. No, read the part where it says those Indians. Page 364. So the chapter is called A Lost Tribe Found in New York. Because what did they commonly call the Hispanic tribes? The Ten Lost Tribes. Because they say, oh, they're lost. We don't know where they are. They know where they are. They put it in this book to let you know they know where they are. So read this chapter. For you, sister. Come on. Those Indians, he told himself. This is what a white man said. A white man, he was a convert. And he said, though, while in jail, he said, those Indians. He told them himself, uh -huh. they are Hebrew. What did he call the Indians? They are Hebrew. He called these Indians Hebrews. Come on. Pondering, pondering this thought uh -huh. incredulously. Now wait, we're going to skip that. Jump to the part where it says waving a banner. Let's get to the point. Waving a banner high oh. in the air. So wait, I want y'all to listen good. We're reading a book called Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. We're out here and our foundation teaching is from the Bible. But we're showing you a history book where the white man himself tells you the Indians are Israelites. That's are right. Israelites. So we're showing you all your churches you've been learning has been garbage. That's right. Garbage. Garbage. Come on. Waving a banner in the air, the Indian guide soon was greeted by a puff of smoke. Uh-huh. Far beyond the other bank of the river. Come on. In response to his signal, the two men waited. E eventually, a canoe appeared. Start off with, with that again, because what, what, what happened was this guy that converted, he, 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 he pretended to be a Jew, this guy. And he was led by an Indian guide, and he told him, he said, look, lead me to where my brothers are, because I hear that we, there's Israelites here. So they got into a canoe and they were sailing. And when they got there, read it from the puff of smoke again. Waving a banner. Waving a banner. So they're inside the canoe together. Waving a banner high in the air. The Indian guide soon was greeted by a puff of smoke. So they're in the canoe and they see way above the other side of the river, they see a puff of smoke. Come on. Far beyond the other bank of the river. Go ahead. In response to his signal, the two men eventually a canoe appeared so they waited they saw the smoke and then they waited so then another canoe came over to where they was at bearing three men and a woman listen good bearing three men and a woman inside this canoe what time period is the 1500s all of them Indians all of them Indians were they really Indians listen to the place where Francisco and Montezinos were standing. That's, what, that's the people. To the edge where these men were standing. Come on. At the water's edge. The woman got off and spoke to Francisco in an Indian tongue that the Montezinos could not understand. So the Indian guide understood the Hebrew language that the Indians were speaking. So when she came, they were speaking together. But Francisco was acting like he was a Jew. He was listening. Read it again. The woman got off, the woman got off and spoke to Francisco in an Indian tongue that Montezinos could not understand. We're gonna find out what this Indian tongue was. It's gonna tell you straight up. Although he could perceive that he was being identified in the conversation. You know how two people could be talking in another language, but you can tell they're talking about
about you? Because what the end, what they were saying is that this guy said he's your brother. That's what they were saying. They were t they were they were telling he was telling the people in the in the canoe, the Israelites, the Indians. He said this man is your brother. That's what he was saying. But he was speaking to them in Hebrew and Mon and he couldn't understand it. She then turned to her male companions to explain the situation. So then, when she finished speaking to the guy, she turned to the people that were still in the canoe to tell them that this is their brother. Upon hearing her words, upon hearing her words about who this man was, they rose. They rose out of the canoe, went over to Montezino. These Indians that was in the canoe went over to Montezinos and to his utter astonishment and to his utter amazement it blew his mind said Shema meaning listen here that's Hebrew come on said Shema uh, Shema Yashallah Yahweh Allah Hayyanawa Yahweh Achad that's what he said meaning here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one that's right <laughs> that's what he said that's what the Indians said to him read here O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. They had recited The in, Indians had did what? They had recited in Hebrew the fundamental credo of Judaism. Give me the book of Mark, because that's written in there. I'm gonna show you what they quoted. I'm showing you that the, the Native Americans and all of the Indian tribes, they had the Bible before. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He's telling you what that language meant. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. My question is, why in the world would Indians be saying that? Why would Indians be saying that? Because they're not Indians. They are the Hebrew Israelites. That's what the brothers been bringing up. That's right. to be a 
a member of the college and not even know that the college has the same books that we're bringing out. You're paying for college and you don't even know the books are in there. That was an embarrassment. But that's showing you that these people ain't learning anything.